Hello, this is Mad Lib, and you're watching First Look. Hello, I'm Don Was, the president of Blue Note Records. In 2003, the brilliant artist, DJ, producer, and musician Mad Lib released his album Shades of Blue, featuring remixes and reimaginings of tracks from the Blue Note vaults. It's a milestone record that took the, the meeting place between hip hop and jazz to a whole new level. I, I don't think it's out of line to say that Shades of Blue set the stage and influenced everything that has subsequently taken place in that musical realm. And on the eve of the 20th anniversary of Shades of Blue and the new Audiophile Classic Vinyl Series reissue of the album, Mad Lib is here to discuss that classic recording. Good to see you, man. Thanks for doing this. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely true, man. It's a magnificent Crazy. classic record. And now we're putting out a 20th. <laughs> that Blue Note record, that's just an honor. You know what I mean? It, I, have, I almost have every record. You know what I mean? that, well, that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Be, uh, because I didn't understand how you were able to choose from, there, there are probably 20,000 songs to choose from. How, what kind of access to the, to the vault did you have, and how did you know about all these tracks? I had access to a lot of stuff. I went to uh, a place where you guys have the storage, mm -hmm. and I just picked out stuff with Eli on a bunch of different stuff. Wow. Yeah, I, picked out, I picked out stuff I knew and stuff that I didn't really know. You know? Like, I didn't know that Donald Byrd just didn't land right before. I don't, I don't understand how I didn't know that. <laughs> Nobody knew about it. I, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know him. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I can't believe it's been 20 years since you did this. It's, it's one of the greatest, most beloved, most critically acclaimed albums in our 85-year history. Looking back on it, when you, when you listen now, how, how do you feel about the whole undertaking? Uh, I'm glad how it came out. Because it's totally different than how I planned it. Right. I mean, the first the first one was a little more, probably more jazzy, but, you know, the story, Peanut Butter Wolf kicked the chord out, like, right before I was going to turn it in. Mm -hmm. just freestyled the whole album, like, in a few days. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. Totally so different songs. Well, it's, it's clear from listening to this and all your other work that you have a, a really profound understanding of jazz. And w where does that come from? Uh, from my parents. My mom and dad had a massive record collection, which I have now. And uh, my pops was an R&B singer. My mother wrote all the music. So we had a piano in the house. So my mom was always at the piano. My dad was in the studio. And my uncle was this John Faddis, who was a jazz musician, he played with Dizzy. Great jazz musician. Dizzy and all that type of stuff. And my grandparents. Right. My grandparents played a big part too. They had every, all the records. Blue Note and all that. Well, I, I remember reading an interview with you where you noted a similarity between jazz musicians and hip hop musicians. You compared Jay Dilla to Coltrane in that everybody who yeah. came after had to follow what they did. And I agree totally with that. There's definitely an integral relationship between hip hop and jazz. And why do you think the two go hand in hand? What is it? Uh, American art form, you know what I mean? Made, made something out of nothing. And, you know, it, they're both raw, you, you both improvise, you know what I mean? You may not write music, but you do right now. Yes, yeah, improvising and raw, and people don't, didn't like it at first, just like jazz, you know? Yeah. Same, same type of stuff. Yeah. How, how did the actual opportunity to make this record come about? Whose idea was it? Uh, Eli Wolf. A guy named Eli Wolf, who was an A&R. He used to hang with Peanut Butter Wolf when I was on the Stone Store label. Right. And they, they came with the idea. I was, I was all with it. <laughs> well, it, I, I still marvel at the dream. A dream. You know? <laughs> mm. I still, I still marvel at the, the job you did. You have, you have a, an incredible talent for identifying not just great beats, but it blows my mind the way you can pick four bars of music that when taken out of context and hypnotically repeated, they become a whole different musical universe. How do you know, how do you know what four bars to choose? Uh, it's all it's, it's your ear, you know what I mean? Whatever catches the ear. Yeah. You know, I'm all about the ganja, you know what I mean? 
weed is, uh, you know, it's illegal now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Open your mind and just, you know, meditate. Basically, it's like um, chanting. Like, the loops are like meditation. You know I mean? You're lost in it. You're in your own world, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you, Some people think it's just a broken record, but you know, people didn't know. Like, you know oh no, it's, it's no, it, it, it you, but you, you, you just have such a talent for finding the things that, that, that just open up. Let, let, let's talk about a few of the tracks. Okay. The album leads off with a brilliant but pretty obscure track from Gene Harris and the Three Sounds original. The three sounds. <laughs> Great band, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, the, the song was originally called The Book of Slim from the album Elegant Soul, and you turned it into Slim's Return, and it kind of sets the tone for what's coming on the rest of the record. T- tell us about that track. Uh, you know, I, I love all those albums, you know, like produced by Monk Higgins. You know, I think he's from L.A. I, I like mm-hmm. all his music because he put the funk and the soul and into the jazz, you know what I mean? You know, I think those records sold a little bit, too. You know, crossover jazz, I guess, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just like the the raw sound of Monk. You know, Monk. Right. Well, Monk Higgins, yeah. Let, let, let's play a little bit of that one. Yes, sir. One, two, one, two. Well, that was that was Slim's return from Mad Lib's legendary album Shades of Blue. Classic so, trio, classic trio, great trio out of Michigan too. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Distant Land was we we mentioned this before. It was an unissued outtake from Donald Byrd's uh, Blackbird Sessions in 1972. It's a. It, it's really is. It was originally produced and arranged by the brilliant Larry Mizell. And my favorite. It's something it. awesome. Yep. Yeah. How did you even know about the existence of this track? Uh, I, I asked for Donald Bird tracks from Eli. You know, I had to get the funk, you know, the funk jazz. So mm-hmm. there was a couple of unreleased tunes on there. I didn't even know that was my Zell at first. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. It's my favorite, one of my favorite bands on Blue Note too. That whole band, rhythm section. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Eli, you know what I mean? I just asked. For, I put certain names, but I didn't put the titles. I Choose. Yeah. Well, he did a good job, man. That's great. Whatever, great. Some, whatever, whatever <laughs> you guys bring me, I gotta make some matter. You know? That's cool. Well, let's play a little bit of Distant Land. I love that song. All right, well, that's Distant Land from Shades of Blue, now celebrating its 20th anniversary. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> it flew by, man. <laughs> <laughs> I should have did one every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not too late, you know. <laughs> um, Mystic Bounce, was that, that was originally uh, Mystic Brew by Ronnie Foster from his Two-Headed Freep album. Awesome. And, you, you know, we re-signed Ronnie to the label, and he made a great album oh, nice. last year. He's playing brilliantly, and you guys should absolutely do something together. I think that oh, I'm definitely down. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I have all his records, too. The cat, all, all right. this stuff. That, George Benson, yeah. George Benson on the you know, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 He's no, you, great. He's great. He's got and good stories. Because I wanted to tie the hip-hop thing, you know, because Trap Called Quest used that for lexical relaxation. Right. So I just wanted to do it. Dancy, like a bouncy type track. I mean, yeah. No, you did something completely different than Tribe did with it. Uh, but it, disco, you know. it's great. You put some kungas on. It's, it's a great track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 
Let, let's play a little bit of that Mystic Bounce from Mad Lib oh. classic album Shades of Blue. Thank you. Funky Blue Note is the one original song on the album, written by you Sorry. and performed by the legendary, although mysterious, Morgan Adams Quartet Plus Two. Yeah, and you know, I've I've been checking all the festivals and and uh, I've been hoping they'd make an appearance somewhere, but uh, it must be tough to get all those guys together in one place, huh? Yeah, the jazz is too it's too uh, real, it's too raw. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Only, only festival they would be at is like a Blue Note festival. Yeah, I, I could see them turning up there sometime. Yeah. Uh, ready for that Napa trip, actually. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, about Funky uh, Funky Blue Note. Funky Blue Note uh, it was a freestyle track, you know what I mean? Uh, spontaneous. I just laid down the uh, drum, drum pattern, play some organ, uh, bass line, and I added a guitarist and a couple other dudes on it from Connie, Connie Price and the Keystone. Right. Those dudes, and we just made a, a homage to the funkier side of Blue Note. You know what I mean? Now every Blue Note record had a like a funky song. That's right. Sixties. Right. You know mm -hmm. I mean? So I'm just trying to do 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 the raw version. You know what I mean? Right. All right. Let, let's play a little bit of that. I had this funky blue note from Mad Lib Sh Shade of Blue album performed by the Morgan Adams Quartet plus two. Plus two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fans are always asking us when volume two of Shades of Blue is coming. What do you think? Um, I think we're going to do it within a year. I like that. Within a year. You know? that's, that's I want to go back and I want to get some archives and want to do like a few albums and turn it in and you guys can pick the best stuff you know what I mean? let's let's do it that's a handshake deal right there handshake. <laughs> let's go. i have a look man right. thanks thanks so much for joining us here today the the album's a masterpiece it's had a profound so effect much. on music and i hope you're as proud of it as we are man i'm very proud thank you for having me this is one of the highest honors in my music career oh man thanks for watching first look and we'll see y'all next time thank you guys peace long live blue note if you enjoyed first look and would like to see more please hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon that way you'll be notified when we post our next video